Hi guys, so today we're actually going to be working with our Graph Tech Cutter and more specifically getting you guys started on using the Graph Tech Pro Studio. We're going to be running through the basics on how to use this software. More so, we're going to be looking into um, things like adding text, vectorizing, offset, so shadows and outlines, using different colors, arching, adding shapes, and also manipulating those things. Um, we're also going to go over the page setup and more specifically how you view this actual software. So what we've seen is a lot of people haven't really been familiarized with this and they've actually added a very useful tool. So if you go on over to file, you go down to workspace, you see here you have a bunch of different programs. So what they do is they mimic the viewing of that program so you feel a little bit more comfortable using it. So for example, if we go on over here and we click Adobe, you see that the actual format changes a little bit to look more like that. But this one, uh, today we're actually going to just go on over and just use the default Alrighty, so you see here we have all of our tools and up here we have uh, different tools up here. Now, you actually can manipulate this and add whatever it is that you use most. So if you just right click right on that toolbar, you actually see everything that you can add. So, you know, if you're using this for apparel, most more than likely you're going to be adding text very often. So we can just throw that on up there. Um, you would just put it there, drag it, and leave that. Now, if you want to add anything else, today I'm not going to just because I think that would be what we use most often, but as you see here, you can add any of what you see fit. Now, um, I'm just going to jump on in, and I'm going to, first, in this demonstration, I'm actually going to add the photo first, just because that's going to be the center of my design, and I want it to be what I work around, so let's just add that. Okay, now as you see here, it's extremely large, it's a little too large for me to work with, so I'm just going to grab that and I'm going to scale it down and just center it, because like I said, that's what I'm, I'm working around today. So um, we have the image, now in order to cut it, we do need to, what it's called, vectorize it, and how we do that is you go on over to your tool bar on the side, and it looks like a Z, and it's really easy because once you hover over anything, it's going to let you know what it is that that is supposed to do. So you see here we have auto trace. Now, um, the two most important tabs that I would say always have to be open are right over here to my right. It's Design Central and the Fill Stroke Editor. Now, Design Central, what that does, it's basically the settings on how to manipulate whatever it is that you have selected. So, um, as you see here, right now I don't have anything selected. So this is more so for the page setup. Um, now, in this case, I left it exactly how it was, but you have options here. So let's say you want it horizontal, or if you want it vertical, in this case, portrait and landscape, you could do that there. You control the height and the width right here, so you can just input those. If you want it to be a different color in the back, you could always change that. I will be doing that just a little bit later because I want you guys to see exactly how I am editing everything. Now, the fill stroke, um, that's just to change the colors. That is an option. I do recommend that just because you have more of a visual on what is going to be coming out and what is actually going to be cut in those colors. So I'll show you exactly how I utilize those, but let's just jump on in and vectorize our ballerina. Now, if you guys notice, um, right over here, you have your zoom in and zoom out tool. I utilize those as much as possible just because I'm very detailed and that just allows you to really see, you know, in all detail. So right here, um, you can see she has extremely small cuts in that leotard. So right over here, we have our corners. Usually it's on normal. I have set it to more just because I don't want to miss any of those little cuts. So I want to just make sure that all of those are visible. So I'm just going to go ahead and trace over it. Now we're going to go over to our select tool. We're just going to grab that over and move it. And you see it's traced absolutely great. All of those little lines have been cut to precision, so it came out perfect. Now we're just going to go ahead and delete that original and leave that there. Um, I'm going to zoom out just so I can see. Okay, so I want her a little bit more centered. That's just my preference. All right, great. 
Now, we are going to be adding text, but as you see here, her hands and her head, they're a little bit offset. They're not necessarily straight, but I want my text to go along with her. So how we're going to do that is we're actually going to create what is called a path. Now, we have two options in creating, so uh, you can go over here to your Bezier tool. If you just hold on to that, it actually shows you all of the options, and it's really neat because if you just hold on to that, mouse and you just move it you don't let go it will move with you so for this instance i want to stick to the regular bezier tool you also have your uh, free hand and what that does is it allows you to draw yourself the bezier goes point by point so it comes out a little bit more precise so i'm just going to use that in this instance let's zoom on in here Alrighty. so all i'm really doing is just selecting where i want this line to go so Let's just go across. All right, great. Um, that was a little bit too much for me. Let's do it a little higher. All right, great. So if you see here, um, okay, so we moved it on over here. So the text, we have a ton of different options. So if you're regular text, we have our arc text. We have our path text, which is what I'm going to be using. Now, with this, it is very selective. You have to have your cursor right on that path to be able to go. But um, you just select and you just type whatever it is that you want. So, okay. Now, in editing the text, as you saw, when I actually just started, the Design Central automatically changed and it let me know that it was editing for the text. So if you want anything to be edited, you have to make sure, ah, do you see that cursor? Okay. So you have to make sure that it is highlighted because it's only going to edit what is highlighted. So you guys will see here, I didn't highlight that C and it was the only thing that wasn't edited. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I have that. Alrighty. And then we're going to edit that as well. Now, um, as you see, it's very delicate, so you always want to make sure to have that cursor exactly where you want it. Um, okay, so in this instance, I want it to be, hmm, let's see, so we're going to go on over to text. And if you go, you can change the font size, everything here, but it's a little bit easier to do it through Design Central, so I prefer for it that way. Um, but we're going to go on over here to case. And what that is, is basically changing the case of your font. So if we wanted all caps, doesn't mean you have to have caps lock on. You can manipulate it right through here. In this case, I'm going to choose title case. And what that means is every first letter of the word is going to be capitalized. So as you see there, it automatically went through. And that went great. Now, as you see here, the text is going straight through my dancer's head, and I don't want that to be happening. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to manipulate these points to create an arc. And how we do so is you go over here to your Select Point tool. You're going to do the exact same thing. Hold it. You're going to move it on over so we can play with it. Now, remember, you guys do have the options to add whatever tools you guys use most up on that toolbar. I'm only going to be using this maybe you know, once or twice in this specific design, so I haven't placed it, but you always have that option. Now, I'm going to go on over to my Optimize by Curve, and what that does, it allows me to create a curve simply by you know, selecting two points. So I'm going to select these two right here, and then the second point that you select, you're just going to drag it on over, and you're going to create your arch. Once you see it is where you want it to be, you just click Enter, and bam. It automatically creates your arc. Now we're going to do the same thing over here because we are cutting off her hand and I don't want that. So we're just going to add a little one and add enter. There you go. Now, if you see here, um, let's say this was a little bit slanted and I didn't want that. You want more of a straight edge. You could also do that. So right here is straight in points. You would just select that, click right here to here and boom automatically straight so we can do that as well now let's exit that so we're not going to be using it for now as you see here my a is completely onto my d and my c and my e are not spaced out correctly so to edit that we're going to select our selecting tool now you can you have to click it three times and it will show all of these little points now with each one of these points you can manipulate the entirety of the text or you can select one letter at a time and do so like that. So what I'm going to do is what is called tracking. You just basically create more width 
so you just space them out but as you see here my D is a little crooked and now I have more space here so what you do is you select the point and it says move character now if you hold your control key this allows you to move it up and down I'm so sorry side to side now if you hold on to your shift key that allows you to go up and down so I want it a little bit higher so I'm gonna hold my shift but I want it a little more to the side so I'm gonna hold control and then you can manipulate it however you want like that so there, I think that it's going perfectly with the arch. Maybe the C could mean a little more. Alrighty. And maybe just a little bit more. And there you go. You can specifically move little points there. Now, I don't know if you guys noticed my O. It's kind of a little bit not oriented the way that I want it to. I want it to be a little bit more straight so you can just rotate it like that and you can create it there. So as you see here, my text is flowing with that line. It's going right above it. Now, me, my preference in designing would be to always have it just how it's going to print. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna grab my text. I'm gonna highlight it up. There we go, okay. So as you guys see, like I mentioned before, the cursor is extremely delicate and you always want to make sure that that's correct. Alrighty, so there we go. So I just changed it over to green, reason being is because when I cut it, it will be in green vinyl. So I just want it to manipulate exactly what's going to be coming out. Now, you can select this little path and you can actually delete the path. I'm going to leave it there just because I am going to be adding other things. So I want to make sure that all my precision is still there. So I'm just going to leave that there for now. All right. Now we're going to add some text down here, but I want it to be a little bit different. I want it to be more of an arch. I want it to be more creative. So we can just add anything that we want there. So let's zoom out so we can see that. Now with this, you just select where you want to start typing. And as you see, it actually creates a circle. So you have the visual representation of how it's going to be. So you would just go ahead and type. Now again, remember, this is just my preference. I like to edit the line color because I want it to show exactly what's going to come out. You guys can you know, have your own preference, but this is just something that helps me have more accuracy. So I'm going to go on over to text, go on over to case. This one I want it to be different. So I want everything capitalized. So we're just going to go on there. Now, if you guys see here, Design Central, you have options of manipulating how big the arch is. So right here, you can go, you see that the circle is getting bigger. And now you can see that it's going smaller. So for this one, I want to go, let's see, I want it to be extremely arch. So let's just get that. Um, hmm. You can also go in here if you don't like the original settings. Maybe you could just change it to your liking. You could always just do that. As well, um, I actually already have it set to the bottom, but right here you guys can select how it is that you have it. So, for example, I've already set it to the bottom, but you could always have it at the top. You could always have it at the bottom. Um, you can change that, but this one is already set to mine, so we're just going to leave it on there. Now, it's a little bit too high, so we're going to go on over to our select tool, and I'm just going to go ahead and move that. Now, even though this font is beautiful, um, this isn't something that I would really select for the cutter just because you see that those lines are extremely thin. And if we cut that, it would not really come out so great just because it's very precise. So I'm going to select the same font that I used up top just because it's more of a full font and the cutting will actually come out uh, very nice and thick so you'll be able to see that. Alrighty. Now, if you see here, I'm um, not entirely sure why, but it changed back. You could always just go ahead and manipulate it back to where you want it. So I'm just going to move this on down. Great. Now, if you see here, you can scale it. That's not really what I want to do. So you can just go ahead and select it three times and you can track it. So I want it to be a little bit wider so we can go on there. Great. Now, if you see here, um, it's a little bit more to the right rather than the left. So I'm just going to go ahead and center that out. 
and perfect. Now, what we are missing is a lit, we're gonna dance to, we're gonna shoot for the stars, right? So we have to add some stars. We're gonna have our tool over here. It's our shape tool. Now, if you hover over it, you actually have an array of options of what shape you want. But like I said, we're shooting for the stars, so we're gonna add some stars. Alrighty, so you go ahead and select what object or shape you want to put on and you just simply click where you want it to be. So right here, you see we have our star. Now, it's a little bit too big for me, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to scale it down. Oop. We're just going to scale it down. But remember, my text is, is with the path, so I want it to go as well. So how we do that is you just double click it. And I'm just going to rotate it a little bit to that. And hmm, I think it's a little too big, so we're just going to scale it down some more. All right, great. Let's change that. And there you go. Now, there. So that's how we get our text aligned and how exactly we're going to create that. Now, I want it to be, um, we're actually going to print this with green vinyl, but I want it to pop out a little bit more than what it is right now. So what I'm gonna do, we're gonna go on over to effects. And you here you can add your shadows, but more specifically, I wanna work on with an outline today. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create our outline and over here on Design Central, you can actually change the width of it. So it's thicker here. So let me put a color that you guys can see. Here's some gray. Alrighty, so we can make it thicker, we can make it thinner. Right over here, we can create more. So as you see here, we have three outlines, but in this case, we're just going to choose one. And then over here, you can choose it more square, and this is more of a bubble letter, so you can have that option as well. Now, see here, if let's say we didn't want these O's to be colored in, we would choose uh, this little red box and go to the second one. That's without backing. But in this specific one I've chosen that I do want those O's to be filled because I want it to do more of a pop effect. So I'm going to leave that selected. And we're going to go on right here and do that. Great. Now I'm going to go on down here and I'm going to do the same thing. I want to add my outline to my star too. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. I want my star to be a little bit thinner than what my... My text is, so let's just go ahead and do that. Ah, uh, no. Okay, great. So we're just gonna leave that like that. And then this text as well. So we're just gonna go outline and the exact same thing. Okay, great. A little check mark, and there you go. Now, I don't know if you guys have noticed, even though I did select with the backing, there's still some points right on here that is still blank. Now, um, my preference, I really don't want that just because I don't want to cut that little piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get rid of those. Now, you're going to right click right over the text and you're going to separate the outline. What that does is this just creates its own outline. You see it's not just attached to the text. And with that, I'm going to go on over to my select point tool. Bring that out. And I'm just going to select these points and I'm just going to delete them because I don't want them there. Again, this is my preference. Um, but the awesome thing about it is this gives you the power to always select and choose what it is that you have cut. You're not really stuck with anything that's on the screen. So as you see here, every time I click it, it's selecting these points. You just have to make sure that your cursor is over the correct points you want erased. And voila. So now I have a solid backing. If you see here, we have a little one. All right, great. Now I'm going to go on up and I'm actually going to do the same thing to this as well. So again, right click, separate outline, we're going to select and we're going to delete. And 
and this is where I mentioned the zooming in for me it just becomes a little bit easier because I can see more clearly what I'm doing now I do want to show you guys another option that you have right now I'm just clicking the delete button so I'm really just deleting points but we also have a tool right here and it's the removing point so what you would do is you would just make sure that your cursor goes on over to the minus sign and as soon as it's on a point that it recognizes it can delete it will automatically go there so you have those two options on being able to remove points great now this is actually the design um, in its totality this is exactly what I want alignment and everything now at this point if you'd like you can remove this line I'm not just because I'm using it for future um, designs if I want to change this up I'm gonna leave it there but I'm actually going to show you guys how you can um, tell the cutter itself how to completely ignore that line and not cut it at all great now remember I told you the page setup if you wanted you can change the color of the background so I want to give you guys more of a visual of what will actually be cut so I'm gonna go ahead and do that so we're gonna go ahead and change her to be white because we're going to have a black background and she will disappear for a moment we're just going to go on over now remember if you don't have anything selected what you are editing is the page so we're going to go on over to design central and we're actually going to create our black background there you go now that we have our black background i'm actually going to change this to white because that is the actual color that I want to do that in great and there you go we are all set our design is done and it's ready to be cut so let's go ahead and do that uh, that still looks purple let's go ahead and get that to be white as well great now you can just go on over to right here little cut and plot and you can pop that out uh, give it one moment. There you go. Alrighty, so your pro manager will pop up. You can go right over here. Great. So if you see here, this is everything that we're cutting. Now we're going to go more specific into the colors. So right here, if you have purple, you can go ahead and just let them know to skip it, not print this. You only want to be printing what it is that you have selected. So for example, if you want your white and gray to be cut as you see here it's showing you what's going to be now if you want the purple it comes back but remember we don't want that so I want the cutter to completely ignore it so you can select specifically what you want to be cut at that time and then you can come back and just go ahead and select it so there you go you would just select it and click send and the cutter would go <laughs>